The following is a special presentation of Conifer Radio, our continuing series of Conifer Podcast. Conifer Podcast presents the true life stories of our U.S. Highway 285 corridor and Evergreen residents, their remarkable contributions to our community, and their encouragement to us all. We continue this week with Miss Cindy Latham of Rotary Wildfire Ready in a Conifer Podcast recording from February 10th of 2021. Conifer Radio offers its support and gratitude to Cindy Latham for her continuing contributions and her leadership to our mountain community's fire readiness programs and for being the glue between the three local Rotary Clubs and our several local fire department organizations. Hello, Conifer Bailey and our U.S. 285 corridor and evergreen communities, and welcome to another feature of Conifer Podcast. We are here live and direct in mobile studio with Cindy Latham of Rotary Wildfire Ready. Cindy serves as the chair of Rotary Wildlife Ready, a community-based project designed to increase wildfire awareness and help make our mountain community safer from the threat of wildfire, and one of our special mountain area nonprofit organizations. So welcome, Cindy, to Conifer Podcast. Thank you for having me, Mark. It's just wonderful to be here. Well, Cindy, if you'd like to continue the introduction that I started and uh, provide some background on on Rotary Wildfire Ready, uh, talk about your story. Okay, Um, so Evergreen Rotary kicked off the Rotary Wildfire Ready project. I think it was in the spring of 2020. And what we wanted to do is we actually connected with Evergreen, Conifer Rotary, and Mountain Foothills Rotary Clubs to start this project. And our mission is to increase wildfire awareness and preparedness so that we can help residents be safer from the threat of wildfire, which is a really big deal up here. And uh, we've got quite a number of collaborators that we work with. We have Rotarians and we have a number of community leaders uh, like from Bailey, Conifer, Genesee, Lookout Mountain and Evergreen. We also partner closely with our wildland fire captains up here and they review all of our content. And then we use best practice information that's available from Colorado State Forest Service and CSU Extension. So all of these groups, we try to work with very closely to make sure that everything that we're saying is consistent and the best practice for wildfire preparedness that could happen. And what the Rotary Wildfire Ready Project focuses on is education. And we do that through our website, through our Facebook page. We have digital brochures. Uh, We converted a a big yellow fire truck to a rolling educational laboratory. And then we have a safety team and our safety team is prioritizing uh, emergency notifications, uh, creating a community emergency information resource, evacuation routes, and a whole bunch of other things. Kind of what really started this project is the realization that up in these mountain communities, we don't have any municipal government. So it really is up to community leaders and neighbors helping neighbors to be prepared and get ready for wildfire. Um, The thing that we're finding in working on this project is that we are not ready. We are not ready. And there's an intense urgency to get prepared. So I hope that gives you a little bit more information about what this project's about. Well, it's a very important topic, as we had talked about prior to starting the, the podcast. You've obviously taken very much of a leadership opportunity and role here. Let's continue with you and your story and tell us a little oh. bit about what prompted you to take on the challenge of leading this, this initiative. Okay. Well, all right. So I moved to Evergreen almost three years ago. And what prompted my move, I uh, lived in big cities, is I wanted to be a little closer to my mom who was ailing. And what I was doing prior to coming to Evergreen is I was a chief marketing officer for two large Fortune 500 companies. I remember driving into this area. I fell in love with the beauty, the community, and the trees. So it just was I, it, absolutely in awe when I came in here. Right after I moved in, about two months after I moved in, I listened to a lecture by the Evergreen Wildland Captain, Paul Amundsen. He was uh, trying to help us understand as community members the extremely high wildfire risk here. And that was like the lights coming on for me. And I, I realized that I needed to try to do my part as much as possible to help reduce that risk. So of course I plowed right in 
<laughs> to get things done. And I went straight up a learning curve. There's a lot of things to learn about this. And I worked on my own property. Then I w- worked to make our neighborhood firewise in a six month time period. I got involved in a leadership team with for the community wildfire protection and implementation plans in Evergreen, I mobilized a bunch of mitigation efforts. And then I also got involved in the Jeffco Wildfire Risk Reduction Task Force. But my wake up call to do something even bigger was what happened in November of 2018 in Paradise, California. And I started digging in to try to understand what happened there. And it's similar topography, similar demographics, similar population, similar evacuation routes. They lost 95% of homes and structures in six hours in that fire. 85 people died. Their evacuation notifications failed. People were not prepared. It, it just, it's just a tragic circumstance that I, you know, felt very strongly that we need to do everything in our power to keep from happening in this area. So I went to the Evergreen Rotary Club that I was a member of and talked about this project and they enthusi- enthusiastically supported the request to kick it off. And so we started building a team and plan. So that's kind of a little bit about my story and how I got involved in this. Well, you have a very robust website. We probably should mention that here at www.rotarywildfireready.com. It's all one word, isn't it? That's exactly right. And that website is really, when we started working on this project, we found that this information to know what to do to get ready didn't really exist in Colorado. There was nothing like it um, available. So we said, let's create this. So Uh, And again, that was partnering with um, our local fire captains and working closely with Colorado State Forest Service to make sure all the information on there is best practice recommendations, got videos in it, tips, uh, suggestions, but that's the place to go if you really want to dig in and find out how you can get you, you and your family ready. Excellent information. This is probably a redundant question. We had it in our list to talk about, but talk about Rotary Wildfire Ready and its presence in the region that now Mm -hmm. is so important to not just the Evergreen uh, Conifer Bailey area, but maybe in some of the surrounding mountain communities as well. Well, you know, one of the things that is, I think, more important about what this project is about is advocacy. Our team members are attending lots of county and state meetings on wildfire. You know, we find in a lot of these uh, county meetings and other things that the voice of the community is not necessarily well represented. So we are actively voicing our concerns about the, the dangers in our area and what needs to be done. So advocacy has been a really important role, I think, that we're taking on. The other one that's really been great is about collaboration because we're really working between communities, community leaders and fire departments to talk about these issues and how we can build awareness and how we can best help. So that's been really great. And then uh, making sure that we learn best practices. We do a lot of uh, interviews with other counties that have some best practices in place to learn what they're doing. And then we bring them back to our county officials and agencies just to say, hey, you know, have we considered this? This is something that we might be able to do. So those are, those are some things that I, I think have been very valuable as we work on this project. And I think that it's not just about our area, all of the Colorado area in the wildland urban interface up in the mountains has the same issues and they all need to mobilize and get ready for wildfires. Well, I see from your website and hearkening back to your comments just a few seconds ago about collaboration that you represent three, if not more, uh, rotary organizations and what is it, about Mm -hmm. five or six fire departments? What we've been doing, we have Conifer Rotary, we have Evergreen Rotary and Mountain Foothills Rotary involved in it. A lot of our team members, actually, the majority of our team members are non-Rotarians. These are community leaders with a real passion on this subject. We collaborate as much as we can with our other local fire districts to find out what kind of information would they like to see up on the website, 
you know, what kind of resources would help the community that we can help to create. You know, we put together a series of digital brochures that are reviewed by our uh, wildland uh, captains and just get their get their advice just to make sure we've got some resources that will be very, very valuable to help the community. The reason why I was impressed with that, Cindy, is that you appear to be the glue between all these various organizations. And there's a lot of geography that we have up here that those organizations represent. So it's quite a, it's quite a handful. Well, I, the, the, our local fire districts and our, our amazing collaborative, I say, I can't even say it, collaborators in and of themselves with each other. There, it's it's amazing what they do with even totally without us being involved. So I'm so impressed by how much and how closely they all work together. And that's a man. They're truly heroes in every way. And if people knew all the things they were doing to keep us safe. I think they would be just blown away. Well, folks, we are here live in mobile studio uh, with Cindy Latham of Rotary Wildfire Ready, and you can reach Cindy at nine two five. 899-9872 or shoot her an email to Rotary Wildfire Ready, all one word, at gmail.com. Well, Cindy, let's continue with your future vision for Rotary Wildfire Ready. Okay. What's going to be necessary to help you with your ability to serve our communities? Okay. I, I think the most important thing in terms of a vision for the future is wildfire is going to be a bigger and bigger threat to us. I mean, it's really unfortunate. It's a very tough subject to talk about, but the reality, it's getting hotter, it's getting drier. And we have way too much fuel up here. We have about five times the number of trees now that we did in like 1920. And they're, those trees are drying out quick and they've got a lot of disease. So it's just fuel when you look at it. I was looking at some data and saw that 2002 was Colorado's driest year on record. 2018 was Colorado's warmest year in 124 years. In 2020, it was Colorado's second driest and the warmest year recorded. And that's when we had three of the biggest fires in Colorado history. And to top it off, 2021, we're in this La Nina weather pattern. And it's predicted to be as dry as 2002, which is the year the Heyman fire happened and 2012, which was Waldo Canyon. So we potentially have a very bad wildfire year coming. And, and so this intense urgency to get prepared is just growing and growing. And, and, it's, and especially when you look at our mountain community, we, we really need to get ready because um, two thirds of Jefferson County is in the WUI, which is the wildland urban interface. And Jefferson County is considered the number one fire risk, wildfire risk in Colorado. And at least a third or more of Jefferson County residents live up in this area. And we'll probably get a much higher number after the 2020 census. So what we can do as individuals, all of us can do things to create defensible space, to harden our homes and be ready to evacuate. And you need to really Think about that. Look at the area around you and understand, you know, what is um, needs to be done. Then the other part of our vision is that once we work in our backyard, if you will, to get things ready, we want to reach out and start helping other Colorado mountain communities prepare too. I didn't know this, but 50% of Colorado residents live in the mountain area. 50% of all Coloradans are in the mountainous area up here. And I, I, I think we all understand it because it's really beautiful, but we want to help reach out to community leaders in those areas to help them mobilize uh, their communities. And if we get this figured out, we might be able to extend it into other Western mountain communities all around the U.S. Uh, because at least four and a half million people are at risk for wildfire in across the United States. And we really feeling like this could be a bigger and bigger project as we go forward. Even bigger than it already is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about something fun. Let's shift gears to something hopefully oh, positive good. here. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> well, just do a little levity before we can get back to the seriousness of uh, the topic. And let's talk about yeah. something fun that you've discovered about this project, working up here with all of us crazy mountain dwellers, the 
the differences between the conifer bailey, the US 285 corridor, oh. our side of Evergreen. <laughs> what's what's fun? Oh boy. Gosh, what's fun? All right, you know, if you're if you're a foodie, um, this community's really got you covered. I mean, there's 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 all these um, you, you, you can have barbecue wars, you know, just between the different towns and kind of find out who's doing what, but it's, that's awesome. I, I've also found that there, there's a group for everything and anything up here. I've never seen anything quite like it in all the other places I've lived. You know, it's a very welcoming, very engaging and very active community for whatever is the thing that you're or passionate, you know, passionate about it's up here. You know, there, there, there are differences, I would say, in each of our communities and kind of the vibe that's there. But the universal up in our community is generous people with a lot of passion and a lot of pride are there to help support each other. And I gosh, I just love, I love that about living in this area. It's absolutely unique. And that means gr even greater pressure on protecting it, because I think we all care so much so deeply about the area we live. This is hearkening back to what you'd said uh, about the fact that we don't have municipalities, municipal structures, city governments, right. local government driving things. So that then falls to our shoulders, our collective yes. shoulders. Um, and the businesses up yes. here, which in mm -hmm. essence make a lot of the contributions financially to the good mm -hmm. work. Talk about what's important to them about Rotary Wildfire Ready and, and their support oh. of your organization. This is your pitch. Okay, that, well, that's a, it's a great question. And I think that the best way to look at it is being better prepared for wildfire is just good business. Um, it, going back, you know, I talked about the Paradise Fire in California, the campfire in Paradise, California. 1,500 businesses burned down in that fire. The population went from 27,000 people to 5,000 two years after the fire. And the majority of businesses in Butte County, California, were negatively impacted by that wildfire. And it has, that impact has lasted for, you know, up into the current time. So as a business, you know, you, we cannot allow any wildfires to happen here. It can destroy people's entire way of life your way of earning a living and be gone forever. So being ready is the right thing for us to all be thinking about. And we, we've had great support from the business community for this project. A lot of local businesses really understand the risk. We've got realtors that are mobilizing efforts to do wildfire education to help homeowners. I think that's awesome. They're really kind of reaching out. We've got a lot of local insurance agents who are big advocates for the program and, and have just lent their support because they, they're you know, wanting to make sure that they can keep the community safe and they can provide insurance for people. Obviously, we would love a lot more businesses and business leaders to help spread the word. They can either join our teams. We have an education team or a safety team and get involved. Or if they want to do any contributions, they certainly can do that. We're a nonprofit. We don't have any administrative costs whatsoever. So 100% of people's donations go to these efforts to get, a, you know, educational materials prepared or, you know, safety materials prepared. So we're being very, very thoughtful about that. But we need the businesses um, to be engaged here and because it's good business for them too, because we don't want to have wildfires in our area. And shifting from businesses to Cindy. Let's talk about <laughs> you and what is what is, what interesting fact is there about you that you would love the mountain communities to know about? Okay, well, let me see. Um, I I've had a long, long career in um, uh, developing products and you know marketing and all sorts of other efforts. And one of the things that I did is I created a line of non toxic cleaning products that was featured on Oprah three times as one of her favorite things. And that line was also used in the White House. And I actually went to the White House to teach the janitorial staff how to use it. That was that's kind of a funny aside. Um, I also uh, led the effort to make my company, um, th this was Shackley Corporation, the very first climate neutral certified company in the world in 2000. And I kept it that way. 
And in those times, there were not offsets you could do. So we had to, we had, we put up the very first turbine, wind turbine on the Redbud Sioux Indian Reservation. We con converted the boilers in the Portland School District to biodiesel. We redid a bunch of school buses in LA to use biodiesel. So, I mean, really big project and didn't, nobody thought it could be done and we did it. So my kind of motto is you got to believe that the impossible is always possible. And so, you know, things can look overwhelming, but if you make, if you take baby steps at it and you keep at it, you can actually get things done. So that, that's a, that's always been helpful for me in my career to think about things that way. And that's why this project is, is dynamic. It's really big, but you know, every little bit is going to matter. So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this too. So you, not only this project, but you also have, it sounds like you have a gift in terms of marketing, visualizing, and then helping bring these things to life. Well, I have to say that the most important thing that I get to do is bring people together that are amazing people that help get things done. So, you know, I just, it really is about the people I get to work with and that are on the teams that are amazing people. And boy, that's been a joy to be able to do. So um, maybe, maybe I can, I create some glue, but they, they make all the things possible. You help others create their own glue. And uh, you also mentioned before we started the podcast that you're a dog lover, that there, there's a couple of puppies oh, in your house. I have, I have two dogs. I've got another puppy coming soon uh, in two weeks. So I'll be a three dog owner. And I, I have a horse up here. You know, when I lived in the cities for all my, you know, for 40 years, I never could imagine having my own horse. And, and so I've been loving being able to explore how beautiful it is on my Tennessee Walker. So that's been, that's been a little, that's, oh, I love doing that. <laughs> and the, so is Tennessee Walker the name of the horse or is that just a, it, it's a the, type of a horse. A type of horse. It right. is a type of the horse. So you don't bounce around on it so much. So we need a name. What's the name of your horse? Soraya. 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 And the two yeah. puppies that you have with a third one coming, their names? It, it's Floyd and Barney from Mayberry RFD. I think the, yeah, the Andy Williams show. And uh, the new puppy is going to name Millie because Millie was a love interest of Floyd the barber and Barney deputy, that, oh, yeah. that guy. Barney, Barney. Barney Fife. <laughs> Barney one, Fife also had a bullet. crush on her. Yes. <laughs> so I've, we've got, that's all of our three dogs have a theme, the names. <laughs> Someday you can get one named Emmett and then you'll have Emmett's fix it shop guy. To, That's know. exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, well as yeah. we close our discussion today, maybe some encouraging words from you, Cindy, for the communities. What encouragement do you have for our mountain communities and for our future of uh, our, our mountain culture? You know, one of the really encouraging things to me is as you start working with like Colorado State Forestry um, our Colorado representative with FEMA and other state organizations, they have a lot of attention on our area. They, they know the risk, they're concerned about it, and they're standing by to make resources available to help. That's been really, really encouraging to find. And then, you know, we've got some great county commissioners like Leslie Dahlcamper, who are all over this topic. They're very concerned about the threat of wildfire and very incredible advocacy for our community on this. So that's been really, really encouraging. And then the things that are going on with their local fire departments, I can't even begin to say enough about what their wildland divisions are doing. Like uh, the, there's a number of new community wildfire protection plans, like Bailey's got a new one that came out. Uh, Lookout Mountain just had one that just came out. Evergreens just came out. Conifer's working on theirs. But so updating all of the information that's really vital for the community to know about. Our fire departments are working on strategic fuel breaks and partnering with like the uh, Colorado State Forest Service and Johnson County Development. They've got their chipping program in place to help remove slash between Evergreen and Conifer. Uh, they're also starting a program called Wildfire Prepared, which are home assessments to be able to come to residents by fire, uh, uh, our fire department experts to talk about defensible space and home hardening. That's incredible. 
And the just the the collaboration that they do between fire departments is amazing. So they're man, there's just so much they're doing that is so encouraging for all of us. And then the other thing that's starting to happen is neighborhood groups are starting to form to get ready for wildfire because the very best way to get started is to get your neighborhood to talk about this issue, to figure out what you need to do in your neighborhood to get prepared. Um, There are 15 active groups in Evergreen and more forming. There are more FireWise communities coming online in this area. Everyone can mobilize within your own neighborhood to get prepared. And there's all sorts of support resources to help you do that. I guess the other encouragement is that all of us can do something about this. I mean, it's not like an earthquake happens and you're not, you know, or just suddenly happen. You can prepare for wildfire. And our website that you mentioned earlier has got all the resources, really a lot of the resources you need, getting signed up for your emergency notification, building defensible space, uh, hardening your home because the ember fires are what really take homes, Um, making sure you've got your go bag, knowing what to do for an evacuation. This is the stuff that we are all individually There is my dog Floyd in the background. Sorry about that. Anyway, what you need to do to evacuate. I guess the other encouragement I would offer is that please, please, please share the information with your neighborhood, family, and friends. We've got a great Facebook page at Rotary Wildfire Ready where we're putting up educational information resources. And it only works if people share it with other folks. So that's what I would really encourage people to do. But we we can get ready. And there are a lot of communities all over the Western part of the United States that really have taken this on, who have mobilized actions to protect their communities. And I think we, we love living here. I think we all, uh, we all would be beyond devastated if anything happened in our area. So but we can we can make it better. We we bear a responsibility to what Cindy's talking about here. As we close the interview, on behalf of uh, the Rotary Wildfire Ready Organization, the US 285 Corridor Communities, and Conifer Radio, we recognize Cindy. We recognize you, Cindy, and your continuing leadership of all these various initiatives on behalf of our local mountain community. And your promotion of our fire readiness initiatives. We want to wish you all the best in your continuing service to the community. And once again, how can our listeners best get in touch with you? Uh, the best way to do that would be you can uh, email me at rotarywildfireready at gmail.com. Um, you can contact me if you want to discuss how you could get involved at 925 899 9872. And again, your best resource to really kind of learn about this project and how you can help your families go to the website at rotarywildfireready.com. Thank you for your time, Mark. And I just really appreciate having the opportunity to talk about this really important initiative that I know so many of us are really passionate about. Folks, you've heard it live and direct here with Miss Cindy Latham of Rotary Wildfire Ready. Once again, thank you very much for your time today. We look forward to having you on again sometime in the future. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was just a pleasure.